I'm starting to work on flesh tones and I wanted to talk a little bit about how I choose my colors for flesh tones. Um, because there are many different colors that can indicate that uh, what you're looking at is skin. And I started with a really obvious one on this figure. Um, if you remember, uh, this is sort of my palette, red and red. And I chose a color that complemented this um, uh, to give her sort of a realistic flesh tone, even though the majority of this is still uh, gesso, is still white. Um, so all I did was, with a very fine brush, I went in with some thinned out um, acrylic and I shadowed where there should be contours on the face. And um, I used to do this with my makeup students when I taught stage makeup. The first thing I would do was uh, have them go in and do a skeleton on their face so that they could feel where the contours are on a face. Um, there's a very definite depression in here where the eye socket is. So there's a heavy shadow in there. Um, and there's also a shadow uh, slightly underneath the eye because the eye sits uh, in the middle of that opening in the skull. If you can uh, visualize a skull, this right here is that black spot that we usually put when we're indicating skull. So shadows above and below the eyeball. Um, shadows underneath the cheekbones uh, because there's a hollow right here. Um, before you get to teeth. And um, then shadows where things stick out on the face. So this part of the nose right here will always have a shadow under it because it sticks out and creates a shelf almost. And um, if you think of your, the nose as like an awning uh, hanging over the lips, there's gonna be a shadow underneath that awning. Um, there's a depression right underneath the nose. If you um, put your finger uh, right above your lips, you'll feel that depression. Um, it's more pronounced on some people than others. And then uh, the lip sticks out and creates another sort of little shelf. And so there's going to be a shadow there. And then the head sticks out from the neck. So there's going to be a shadow where the head sticks out. And this shadow extends pretty far down because the chin uh, is very far away from this part of the neck. It's a, it's a huge distance. So you're always going to want to shadow a lot farther than you think. Um, so, and then I do shadows like here are flowers sticking out over her head. Of course, there's going to be shadows there. Um, hair, wherever there is hair, there's going to be a shadow um, to differentiate between where the hair sits and where the shoulder sits behind it or where the neck sits behind it. So you sort of have to think about your drawing in terms of layers. Um, the flowers stick out the furthest, then the hair, then the face, then the body. So this is pretty realistic, uh, even though uh, it's still mostly white. And my fingers, figures too tend to be mostly white. Um, it's just the way I paint. Um, I'll probably come back on this in a bit after this is dried and do some warming up of her cheeks and her chin um, and a little bit on her forehead. But for the most part, um, that's painted and that's using, uh, again, the sort of warm brown. Um, so I thought I would show you how I do this with a color that's maybe not so realistic. And um, this is my palette for uh, my little Frida sketch. So uh, two greens and a pink. And uh, this is the color that I've chosen for her skin tone, um, kind of a warm purple. Kind of a weird thing to choose for flesh, but um, purple 
for some reason, tends to be a good underpainting color for flesh tones. Um, and I find it very satisfying to use uh, as a shadow color. So, and all I have here is a tiny bit of paint, some water, and a pretty fine brush. This is uh, um, one of the finest brushes that I have. I have this one out too, it's a little bit finer. Uh, and I generally discourage people from watering down acrylics too much because they're not meant to be thinned uh, into glazes. They're meant to be used with uh, matte medium for glaze or some kind of acrylic medium. But for this, because it's such a tiny little bit, I don't mind. And I'm going to seal this when I'm done, so it's no big deal. So I almost always start with um, the brown line because it's the darkest, one of the darkest shadows. And that way I can tell how heavy my color is, if I need to thin it more or if I need to water it down more. I'm just following the contours of her face. If it gets too heavy, just stick your finger on it to lift some of the paint and remember to wipe off your fingers. Must always shadow the hairline. And I'm pushing that into her hair so that it's not too hard of a line. But there's almost always shadowing around the hairline. And I'm going to shadow her ears because her ears sit back from the head. They're going to be in shadow. And underneath her chin. So it's going to be dark right up against her chin and in this little corner where her head meets her neck. But then, as you get down lower, more light gets in. There's gonna be a little bit less of a shadow. Bones. I must always do a little triangle and then put my finger on the edge to soften it. I don't want the cheekbones to be too sharp on most figures. It's amazing how much that makes the, the face pop.
very dark, dark right here. Oh, and one of the things I wanted to say is um, very often when I do large paintings, I will do some shadowing ahead of time with a pencil or with charcoal so that there's uh, shadows and shading um, that are very dark and very pronounced and then go over it with some paint like I'm doing now to give it some depth and some color. But because these paintings are so tiny, that kind of work would make the figure very heavy and very muddy. So I'm opting not to do that. Just doing it with the color. Much better. Here. She's looking pretty good. Need to do a little more shadowing on her fingers. Since I'm doing flesh tones, I may as well do the fingers too. So now I can let this set up and then come back in and do either some very dark darks with paint straight out of the bottle or some color like I would on this one uh, on the cheeks, but I don't know. Kind of like this plum on her. And I think this is a good illustration of realistic versus non-realistic skin tones. Like there is nothing real about the way I'm treating uh, this Frida figure. Nobody has skin that's this color. But if she were standing in a sunset or in front of neon light or in a situation where the light that's falling on her skin is not the sort of bluish white that you see in sunlight, then you might get something like that. So I think that's what I have to say about skin tones. Um, I pretty much treated these two figures the same way, uh, but I used a realistic color on this one and one that was less realistic on this one.